Hello and welcome to Stand Up For Jehovah. Now, in the week that saw Peter Sutcliffe getting baptised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in Broadmoor Hospital, if you don't know who Peter Sutcliffe is, he's the person who called himself, or was called, the Yorkshire Ripper who murdered prostitutes. Um, he got imprisoned for life and this week it was reported that he got baptised as a Jehovah's Witness and as my friend who is a policeman said, what a catch! <laughs> I'm guessing that um, because they didn't have enough maybe criminals and paedophiles already in the congregations just naturally occurring that they thought that they'd do some kind of outreach service to wicked wicked people and see if they could get a few more recruits in. Now I think I've mentioned before that um, where I live in Gloucester there are two notorious criminals um, that if they were released, well one of them has been released, but if the other was released they could have both ended up in Gloucester Congregation. One of them is Eunice Spry who, who tortured, I won't describe what she did, but no less than tortured for years the children that she had adopted um, and, and was a Jehovah's Witness and now that has been released still is a Jehovah's Witness. Um, and the other notorious criminal is Rose West who is allegedly, well is, studying with Jehovah's Witnesses in prison. Now can you imagine being in Gloucester Congregation and if Rose West was released and Eunice Spry decided to start attending Gloucester meetings, can you imagine them both being sat there in the Kingdom Hall? How horrific! I mean, however much these people uh, claim to forgive people, would you really want them sat on your row sharing the songbook with your kids? I just, I can't imagine it. Um, but somehow it doesn't bother the witnesses at all. So back to the original news story, Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper. Um, so basically it was reported in the national press in England this week. The Daily Mail reported it and I think the Sun reported it. And um, an ex-Jehovah's Witness called Steve Rose phoned up Bethel and recorded the um, telephone call, which I think you might be able to find on YouTube. And he asked them, is it true that Peter Sutcliffe has been baptised as a Jehovah's Witness? And they said, oh no, oh no, that can't be true. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, not the Yorkshire Ripper. <laughs> Surely not. You see the poor man in Bethel thinking, oh God, help us. It's another good day to very bad news. Quick, let's have some doctrine changes while everyone's talking about the Ripper. Anyway, so Steve Rose went back to the journalist and contacted her and said, um, you know, the London headquarters are saying this isn't true. And the journalist who'd reported said to him, it absolutely is true. I can't reveal my source, but it is true. I wouldn't have put it in the national press if it wasn't true. So there you go. <laughs> Peter Sutcliffe, <gasps> what a catch. But this got me thinking, you know, there's been a lot of stories about Jehovah's Witnesses recently in the news. It's just been horrific PR for them. So to list a few, there was the um, the elder in Barry congregation who got 14 years, Mark Sewell. There was the elder down in Plymouth, is it? Barry Barry somebody or other furlong, I think, who got 12 years for paedophilia. Um, then there was somebody else in Bournemouth who got three and a half years. There was a guy who got three years for rape and buggery and child cruelty, all Jehovah's Witnesses. And this has all been in the last few months. But then to top it all, if Peter Sutcliffe wasn't bad enough, two days ago in the news, or was it yesterday? I can't remember. It was reported that Brustome Ziamani um, well, is in court for going to behead a British soldier. Now this is following the Lee Rigby case where a British soldier was beheaded by an Islamist and this young boy was absolutely besotted by the Lee Rigby story and desperate to do it himself and he had been radicalised in double quick time and what came out in all the national papers was that this young man, only 19, had been raised as a Jehovah's Witness and that he had decided he didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness and so his parents had kicked him out and he was homeless at the age of 16 and so um, a an Islamist group had taken him in and given him a home and uh, and radicalised him in double quick time and so he was caught with a big a big knife 
and something else and an Islam flag and he was he wanted to be head an English soldier and he's going to be sentenced next week so one up for shunning you know let's kick our 16 year old son out and make him homeless what could possibly go wrong what's the worst that could happen so on top of that then I was reminded by um, a friend of mine called um Oh, jeez, I feel terrible. I've forgotten your name. And I've written it down as well. I'm sorry, it'll come back to me. I'm really, really sorry. Anyway, Will, Will Benson emailed me and said, don't forget about the couple that went to prison last year for making fake bomb detectors. I shit you not. This story is wrong on so many levels so many levels it's it's a beautiful story all in all so the couple were a retired couple called Samuel and Joan Tree and they went Samuel went to prison in October 2014 a few months ago um, and he got three and a half years um, and they were active members of the Dunstable Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses and basically what they were doing was they were making these little things that they bought for like, I don't know, £2.50 from China. They called them the Alpha 6 bomb detector and they sold it, but they sold it in its millions to United Nations, to, to the Egyptian army. They went to arms fairs, arms fairs, Jehovah's Witnesses. You're coming out on field service on Saturday. No, oh, sorry, I've got an arms fair to go to. <laughs> arms first so they were making what was essentially an empty box with a, an antenna that rotated and they claimed it could detect bombs and obviously people's lives are at risk aren't they because when soldiers go out and they're detecting bombs with this empty box they had a turnover of millions apparently but they the thing that must have tipped people off that this was pure bullshit was that Samuel, obviously pushing his luck here, or utterly mentally deranged, said that it could also detect missing people. And he said, if you put a photograph of the person inside the box, it could detect missing people. And he claimed that they could find Madeline McCann. For fuck's sake. If you're going to sell something that you know is pure bullshit, you don't go to the highest profile missing person case in the world and claim that your empty box can find them if you put a photo in. Which begs the question, why didn't he find Madeline McCann with his little bogey box? So there you have it. I can't thank Will Benson enough for reminding me that Samuel and Joan Tree of Dunstable Congregation <laughs> made fake bomb detectors in their shed and sold them. Oh, sweet God in heaven. So anyway, this got me thinking, imagine if they all, now this is pure fantasy now, this is just my fantasy, imagine if they all got released from prison and they all went to the same congregation, right? Eunice Spry, child beater and torturer, um, Rose West, murderer, Peter Sutcliffe, prostitute killer, <laughs> Sam and Joan Tree, <laughs> fake bomb detector <laughs> makers. Imagine if they're all at the Watchtower um, for the study article in May 2015, which is called You Can Fight Satan and Win. And the headline for this article is How You Can Avoid Satan's Traps of Pride, Materialism and Sexual Immorality. Well, if you think about it, Peter Sutcliffe arguably did avoid all those traps, didn't he? Because murdering a prostitute is not, strictly speaking, sexual immorality. I mean, if you don't bang her first before you kill her, you've avoided that trap, haven't you? He didn't make any money from it, did he? So he clearly wasn't in for materialistic uh, aims. And um, pride, well, I'd, I suspect he didn't feel too proud of himself when he'd done it. So I was thinking, maybe the, the Watchtower Society are going to have to start writing lists of sins that don't offend all their new recruits right so they can't they can't have murder in there and and um, a, and sex with a minor um as as a sin can they because all these all these pedophiles and people that are, that are having bible studies might be a bit offended 
So I, I think I need to suggest some new sins for them to put in their magazines for people to avoid. What about leaving the milk out of the fridge? Um, leaving the empty toilet roll. God, don't you just hate that? That should be a sin. That should be a disfellowshipping sin. Taking the last bit of toilet roll and leaving the empty roll for the next shitter that needs to go. What a bastard. What about forgetting to feed the dog? That could be a nice nondescript sin. And then I thought, you know, it is Lent this week. Now, I don't know which religion celebrates Lent, but somebody put a brilliant meme on my meme site about Mormons saying, um, what are you going to give up for Lent? Nothing, because we've already given it all up. We don't do any of it. So I was thinking, you know, if you are a member of a cult and there's nothing else you can give up for Lent because you actually don't do anything at all, maybe you need a list of things that you can do for Lent. Maybe it's a do something for Lent. So again, I've put together a little list for people who are still in cults who'd like to do something for Lent. Um, so how about fornication? Um, snooking up snot instead of using a tissue to blow your nose. That's terrible. Um, masturbation, envy, greed, overindulgence. Just a few starters for 10 if, you, if you've already not doing anything at all and you need a, a new sin. Like I say, I can't remember which religion it is that does Lent. It's all academic to me. Um, but if you ever do stumble across that congregation <laughs> with Barry Furlong and Mark Sewell um, Bruce Dom Ziamani, who likes to behead people, Peter Sutcliffe, um, Eunice Spry, Samuel and Joan Tree. I'm sure you can add half a dozen names of your own, can't you, to it? If you ever do stumble across that congregation, for God's sake, don't leave an empty toilet roll in the toilet cubicle. It could be very, very dangerous. Thank you for listening to another episode of Stand Up for Jehovah.